Hello, I'm Dr. Josh Matthews. We're going to talk about one of the most basic lessons in movie watching and movie criticism. You need to, as a movie viewer, be able to pick out the, what's called the dominant or the focal point in images given to you in movies. Nearly every shot in a movie has a focal point or dominant. The thing you look at very quickly initially when you look at an image. Someday you'll understand that. Ah, no. is looking at you kid pretty much all shots have a center or focal point or place you're supposed to look at first when you look at the image the image has been arranged so that you should look at that focal point first throughout this video i'm going to be showing you various images and pointing out the focal points on screen with text most of the time these focal points are straightforward they're easy to spot there's no controversy about what the focal point in the image is as well focal points are obvious because in the image something's in focus and the rest of the image is out of focus our eyes go to what's in focus what's clear and easy to see whereas everything else is blurry, that makes it obvious what the dominant is when it's in focus. But occasionally a great movie maker will create images that have ambiguous focal points or multiple focal points or no focal points, and then they're probably trying to make a statement about that particular image or thing in the image in the movie. Well, let's state something obvious. Movies are moving pictures. They're basically a collection of thousands of images cut or spliced together. Each of those images we could take out of the movie and analyze as a photograph. We can even analyze them as paintings. A lot of great movie makers are essentially great painters and photographers. They're great at crafting complex, beautiful, intriguing images that we could stare at for a long time and get a lot out of. Now, we don't experience movies in this way. That is, we don't pause movies and stare at individual images or shots. Movies, of course, move by quickly in time. Nevertheless, it's been true throughout movie history that people have collected images or shots from movies, analyzed shots, and that's what movie critics do. That's what I do watching movies shot by shot sometimes. I analyze images. And there's always literally thousands of things you could say about an image that is complex and interesting from an excellent movie. Now, if I'm going to analyze an image, what I really need to do first is think about what the focal point or the dominant in the image is. What's the thing attracting my eye first? Usually it's a human face. I think that all of us humans are innately attracted to human faces. We can find human faces very quickly in our environment. We're able to pick them out of even complex or ambiguous environments. We even find human faces in things that don't have human faces, such as clouds or rocks. And so oftentimes dominance feature human faces. Now I've argued this in other videos that movies are the medium of individuals and beautiful individual faces, or at least intriguing individual faces. So thus we see a lot of images where faces take up the whole frame, or faces are the thing we're supposed to stare at. There are some shots that have multiple people in them though, and so sometimes the dominants are complex. It can be two or more people. There are shots called two shots, for example. That's when you see two characters, sometimes close together at once, and the focal point is actually the two faces together. There are even three shots with three people involved in the frame or the image, and then you're supposed to focus on all three people. Some shots, of course, have two or more people in them, but there's one person you're focusing on and another person giving you guidance as to who you're focusing on. In other words, the secondary person is looking at the dominant major character you're supposed to look at first. In a lot of movie images, there are sight lines that give you hints or tell you outright that the dominant is right there and you ought to look at it first. Now, surrounding the dominant are contrasts. A lot of times this has to do with light and with color. If something is bright or well lit up on the screen and the rest of the image is dark, then clearly the dominant is the thing that's lit up. Also, we're attracted to bright colors. So the dominant can have a bright color while the surrounding areas on the screen are darker colors, which makes that brighter color pop out and make that dominant. It's important to find the dominance or focal points in images because then we know what the most important thing supposedly in the image is. Once we know the important thing in the image, supposedly, then we can start to analyze it and think about what kinds of meanings are created 
in particular scenes or in entire movies. Now with this idea that almost all shots have focal points or dominance, movie makers can certainly play around with our sense of what's important in an image and make things very complex. Some dominants, for example, don't even exist. Now, movie makers like to play around with the idea that maybe there's no dominant or that there are dominants all over the screen. For example, in deep focus shots, everything in the image is in focus. Movie makers like Orson Welles like to use deep focus shots for lots of reasons. One is they're really interesting to look at, but they contain a lot of information, sort of information overload. When everything's in focus, what's the most important thing in the image? The director and movie makers might be bringing up a question about what is important at all in this movie when they use a deep focus shot. They might be questioning the power of somebody or something in the screen. It's important to pick out the dominant in an individual image because once you start to look at editing, you'll see how directors and editors create effects with different dominants in different shots. Putting one shot with one dominant and then switching, cutting to another shot with a different dominant at a different part of the screen can have a psychological effect on viewers. What those psychological effects are depend on context and scene, but if you're going to analyze a movie shot for shot, or even a scene shot for shot, to look at five or six shots in a row and look at the dominant in each one and how that changes or stays the same is important. As well, I've been talking about pausing movies, but in fact, dominance can change in single shots. For example, when characters or objects move around in an individual shot, the dominant, of course, changes as they move. And then when we talk about camera movements, well, then dominance changes as cameras move. So camera movement can go from one dominant and then focus us onto another dominant and maybe in the very same image. No matter what, though, I think this is the first lesson for movie watchers in, say, a movie class or film critics who are wanting to become better film critics. They need to pay attention to what movie makers are focusing on and thus starting to ask questions about why that's the focus of each shot. So begin to look at movie images as you might look at paintings or photographs as inherently complex images that have all kinds of things going on them. Focal points and contrasts and sight lines and colors and lighting. If every picture is worth a thousand words, then every movie image is probably worth 10,000 words. And even then, 10,000 words probably won't be enough to explain a movie image. So that's one of my first basic lessons on movie criticism. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like my video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.